I think the periodic table is definitely taken for granted. If you go into pretty much any science lab, you'll see it plastered up on the wall. It's just something that we know that's always there that we can refer to. However, it wasn't always the case. We didn't always have the periodic table of elements. Imagine being the people who were trying to figure out what stuff was made of. Now, you might think that the idea of atoms is a new idea, but actually the ancient Greeks believed that matter, stuff, was made up of indivisible parts. And they were right. We now know them to be atoms. Yes, okay, we can split them into even smaller bits, but not very easily. But they didn't get as far as thinking about how many different types of these particles might there be. After all, if everything was just made up of one type of atom, the world would be pretty boring, wouldn't it? So in the 1800s, scientists discovered these different types of atoms, different types of elements. So it's all very well just saying, oh, here's one type of one and one type of another, but they wanted a way of classifying them or arrange them in some way. It was John Newlands who started to get the ball rolling. And it was about in 1864 that he started to bring his idea together of how he could arrange these elements. And he ordered them by atomic weight. Now we might say atomic mass, but they said atomic weight back in the day. And so he just said, well, this element is heavier than this one. This element is heavier than this one. So he just put them all in a long line. And what he found was that every eighth element had similar properties. In other words, they acted in a similar way. For instance, he found that lithium, sodium, potassium all reacted similarly with water. And they were every eighth element. So there were seven elements between lithium and sodium, seven elements between sodium and potassium. And then comes along somebody else. Julius Mayer, and around 1870, ordered them by weight and how many atoms they bonded to. For example, oxygen can bond to two hydrogens. So can sulfur. So can selenium. So they were starting to get a picture of how they thought these elements should be arranged. Then along comes Russian scientist Dmitry Mendeleev. And again, it was around a similar time to Julius Mayer. Everybody was working on this at the same time, but it was Mendeleev who basically cracked the code first. He basically took both these ideas of ordering elements in terms of their weight and also the fact that some react in similar ways and he created the periodic table. So if we just say that, hey, here's a very simple to demonstrate the periodic table and actually he did start off with just a very small grid of three by three. He said, I'm going to have these columns going across. I'm going to call them the group. And he said, they can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm going to call the rows period. And so going across, so in each of the periods, if we go across the period, we see an increasing weight, or we might say atomic number, basically interchangeable at the time, but we know they're slightly different now. And then once we reach the end, we go all the way back to here and start again. And so according to Newland's idea that every eighth element acts in a similar way, we can see that going down a group, elements in the same group have similar properties. Well, they still didn't know about electrons and protons and neutrons. If you want to know more about that, have a look at my atomic model video. But this, in essence, was pretty much everything they needed to start doing some proper chemistry to predict how things would react, how they would act. Not only that, but to predict what elements could exist before they had actually discovered them. And lo and behold, they did predict elements that decades later were found even if they had to be made artificially. And actually, that's a really important point. Mendeleev's table was proven to be correct because it accurately predicted elements before they were discovered. Now, of course, Mendeleev started off the periodic table, but as time went on, it was changed bit by bit to make it that much better. But Mendeleev was the first one to bring loads of ideas together to produce the real first periodic table. That was one of the most important tools that we have in chemistry because it allows us to predict what will happen in a reaction. If you want to know more about that, then go on to have a look at my bonding video where I go into a lot of detail as to what elements in different groups and periods means.
So I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like, check out my other videos. And if there's a video that you want me to make, then leave a comment down below. See you next time.